Welcome to The Neuron, I'm Pete Huang. Today, Apple finally, finally dropped their big AI update coming soon to your iPhone, iPad, and Mac. We're going through what they announced, who wins, and who loses. It's Tuesday, June 11th, let's dive in. If we're being honest with ourselves, ever since ChatGPT launched, everyone's been angling for the same thing, this idea of a personal AI assistant. It's what OpenAI says they want ChatGPT to be, it's what Microsoft says they want Copilot to be, and same with Google and Gemini. It's what all these new devices, the rabbits, the humanes, what all of them want their products to be. But all of them miss at least one big thing. ChatGPT wants to be your personal assistant, but can't unless it's super plugged into your life. It's missing the ability to tap into the natural flow of your day to day to understand what's happening beyond what you tell it in a conversation. Microsoft Copilot wants to be your personal assistant, but at best can only be a work one. It can plug into all the Microsoft apps you use at work, all the files you share, but that's work, not personal life, and it's limited to people who use Microsoft products at work. Again, same thing with Google Gemini, but maybe a bit better because Google has more things that you touch in your personal life, like your Gmail, for example. And the new device makers, the rabbits and humanes, they have a way to tap into your personal life. Having a handheld device means it can help you interact with your physical world more easily and you can engage with it more directly than typing stuff in all the time. But the products don't work yet, and even after getting a working product, they still need to get their products in the hands of billions of people. The truth is that most companies cannot build a true personal AI assistant because they can't give their AI tool the ability to see everything you see. For that, you need the AI to be on your devices, your smartphone, your laptop, because you need it to see and access everything that you see. For over a year now, we have been waiting to see what Apple will do with AI. And yesterday, at their long-awaited developers conference, where they announced the new software updates to their iPhone, iPad, and Mac, they're giving us what we've been waiting for, the first view into what a true personal AI assistant should look and feel like. They're calling it Apple Intelligence. And yes, it's a clever rebranding of AI as a term, but even then, this year's conference was the very first time they used the phrase artificial intelligence. Last year, they made sure not to mention it even once. So let's go through some highlights of Apple intelligence. There's some stuff that makes the iPhone experience easier using AI. So for example, the new update can summarize and prioritize your communication. So for example, in the mail app, there will be a new priority section that surfaces the most important threads at the top of your inbox. In your notifications, there'll be a new priority section for the most important notifications across any app. And in your home screen, when you have a bunch of text going on in a chat, there will now be a summary that captures all of what's been discussed, so you don't have to flip through all the notifications one by one. Now, these are really nice, easy ways for AI to add to the iPhone experience. Our email inboxes are only getting more and more busy. I just remember all those times I've seen friends with literally tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of unread emails. And we're getting more notifications than ever too. Every single app on our phone wants us to turn on notifications because it makes us open their apps more. So now we have an entirely new inbox on our lock screens because our own apps are spamming us. So adding AI makes it all get back to normal a bit. Okay, let's talk about the real fun stuff. The vision of the personal AI system is something that has been around for nearly 10 years. Every tech company was chasing it even back then. That's where Apple Siri came from, Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa. But none of them got anywhere close to that vision, mostly because the tech just wasn't there. So you were stuck trying to memorize specific commands that you knew worked with them, rather than something you can directly tell what to do in your own language and have it understand you. So in essence, it was more like a voice remote control than an actual assistant. So in this lens, Apple's choice to reboot Siri is completely right. By combining three new ingredients with Apple intelligence, we now have the tech to actually live up to the original vision. Those three ingredients are one, natural language, number two, access to everything on your device, and three, linking up AI to actions in your app. Here's how all those pieces work. The natural language part is easy to understand. It's the same magic that ChatGPT introduced. 
we can just say what we want and the AI model will understand what we want. The second and third parts are way more interesting. Apple intelligence adds a layer of software that is constantly scanning your phone and what you see on your screen and sort of memorizing it in a way that makes it easy for you to reference using those voice commands. So in their demo, they made it very clear that you can just say things like play the song that Ray sent me and it knows to go into that memory and pull up whatever song had been sent in a text message that Ray had sent you. Every single thing that you see will get scanned and put into that memory. And finally, the AI actions in your app, anything that you would normally do by tapping buttons on a screen in an app can also be turned into code. So for example, if you're in Spotify pressing the play button, you can write a piece of code to do that. Or if you're in the United Airlines app and you wanted to search for a flight, you normally type something and tap a few buttons. And again, all that can be written as code. The same AI models that power ChatGPT also know when they have to use outside tools and how to use them. So just an example, if you go to ChatGPT and say, search online for the latest news in the healthcare industry, it's gonna know that search online means it has to go to a search engine and conduct a search and summarize the results back to you. And doing that search is actually ChatGPT writing a piece of code that does the search and summarizing. So as long as you translate an action in an app into a piece of code, Apple intelligence will know how to use it. So when you put all these things together, these three ingredients that come with Apple intelligence allow you to say whatever it is that you want it to do. It will understand your natural language, your intent behind your request. It will pull up any information that needs to reference and it will then tap into your apps to do the things that you want. Very, very soon, all you'll need to do is talk at your phone and it'll do everything else for you. That is a real assistant. So let's talk about who wins and who loses with Apple intelligence. This obviously is a very, very big win for Apple. Apple was always gonna be one of the largest beneficiaries with this wave of AI, and even though the integrations today feel a little light, they feel like a V1, it's so clear to me that in just two to three years, we're gonna see even more built out that turns our phones into personal AI assistants. It's the first time we're seeing Apple play in AI, and honestly, it's about time, and I'm really, really excited for the future. As we saw before, Apple and OpenAI are partnering on this. Now, the ChatGPT integration is not a very big part of yesterday's launch. Basically, every time you talk to Siri, it will choose between two things. Either it'll need to access stuff on your phone or your personal contacts, so it'll choose to talk to the AI models that live on your phone, or it'll need a more advanced model to answer that question and therefore pass on your message to ChatGPT. The trade-off is that the models on your phone are private but less capable. They're smaller and have to fit on your phone, which makes them dumber. ChatGPT, on the other hand, is way more capable but not private since it's too big to run your phone and therefore has to run on OpenAI servers instead. Something like find me all the pictures of my friend Beth needs your personal information on your phone, so it will run with the models on your phone. But something like what were the defining features of Christian architecture in the medieval West? That doesn't need to access any sensitive information to answer the question. And plus it would benefit from a more powerful model. So it'll ask you if you want to use ChatGPT to answer the question instead. Now this partnership in the short term, this is certainly a win for OpenAI. There are more than a billion active iPhones worldwide. And as much as OpenAI wanted to get on those iPhones using its iOS app, there is nothing more powerful than tapping into potentially every single question that people ask Siri. But long-term, this partnership gets a little bit awkward. Apple rarely has ever kept a critical part of their products with a third party. One of the biggest examples is their chips. They used to rely on Intel for all the chips in phones and laptops and such. And at some point they're like, well, wait a minute, we can just make our own chips and we can make them exactly as we need and save money along the way. So then they started making their own chips and now Intel is completely out of the Apple business. It's similar here. If Apple can ever make their own models that are roughly as good as ChatGPT, even if they're not 100% the same, they don't have to rely on OpenAI anymore or pay them any money. The only question of this happening is the timeline.
Now let's talk about losers. By virtue of OpenAI winning the partnership, the obvious losers might be Google and Anthropic, who were probably in discussions to get their respective AI models where ChatGPT is today. The also obvious losers will be the AI devices, Rabbit, Humane, all of those. I've always had a big question mark as to why they needed to be separate devices that you had to carry around. I mean, wouldn't the experience be the same if they were just an app on your iPhone? For example, one of the big use cases that these AI devices promise is transcribing your day-to-day. -day. You just talk into it and it'll write down what you say. But now even the phone app has a transcription built in. So you don't even need those devices anymore. You literally just have all that functionality baked into the phone app itself. So why do these AI devices need to exist again? I mean, we're already seeing signs of faltering interest in those products. They're not completely dead, and I don't think the experiment with AI devices is necessarily over. Of course, someone still might come up with something very unique here, but I just wouldn't be very excited about them moving forward. Besides that, there really aren't that many other losers. It's not like an open AI announcement where every time they drop something, it seems like a big threat to a bunch of startups who are building similar things. Here, it's not clear to me if any startups are immediately threatened by the Apple intelligence launch. Now, at best, you might think of someone like Grammarly that helps people rewrite text, but even then Apple intelligence doesn't feel like a very big threat to them. In my book, this is the real moment where we start to feel AI in our day to day, when you can just talk at your laptop, your phone, and it'll understand what you want it to do and just do it for you. That is a big AI moment, not ChatGPT writing cute poetry or mid journey generating a surprisingly real image. Those are all moments where we were surprised that a computer could do those things but it hadn't yet hit our day-to-day -day in terms of AI in our daily lives. Apple was always gonna be the one that would make the personal AI assistant real, and it's very much coming into view now. All of these updates will come with the next version of macOS and iOS, which are called macOS Sequoia and iOS 18. Now, both of these are in preview today, but Apple has said that the AI capabilities that we talked about will actually be released later this fall. This probably means mid-September, which is usually when they do the full release of these updates. This is Pete wrapping up the Neuron for June 11th. I'll see you in a couple of days.